Hello everyone, it's Ampersand, and in this video we'll take a look at a spectacular window manager called Hyperland. Its main feature is that it uses Wayland instead of Xorg under the hood. For this reason, referring to it exclusively as a window manager is not entirely accurate, it's more of a compositor. This is because X-based window managers operate in conjunction with Xorg, which is a protocol allowing window managers to interact with monitor, keyboard and mouse. Wayland compositors themselves implement functions that X-Server typically handles, allowing them to directly interact with input and output devices. Roughly speaking, in this case X is replaced by the WLRoots library, which offers a simplified interface for input handling. With that theoretical part covered, let's move on to practice. After installation and before the first launch of Hyperland, I recommend copying the default config and changing the terminal emulator from Kitty to the one used on your system. The Hyperland configuration file is quite simple and intuitive. Near the top there is a monitor setup. Usually it sets things up automatically, but not always successfully. So many applications may display with incorrect scaling. To address this issue, change the last parameter from auto to 1. Additionally, in the config you can set environment variables. This is particularly useful for setting the desired GTK theme, cursor, QT settings and so on. Options for configuring Hyperland are divided into several categories. In the general category you can configure basic settings like the default layout, frame colors, padding size and more. By default the window layout is used, which is similar to BSPWM, where each selected window is divided into two halves when opening a new one. You can change it to master, which is more like DWM, where there is a main large window on the left and secondary windows on the right. When focusing, the cursor will teleport from the center of one window to another. If you don't like this feature, you can change no cursor warps to true. The next category is decoration. Here you can adjust shadows, window routing, transparency, and there is also a subcategory for configuring blur. Configuring the animations category is a bit different from the others. Here we write the keyword animation followed by an equal sign, the name of the animation, whether it's enabled or disabled, speed, Bezier curve and animation style, although the last is optional. The Bezier curve is a ratio of time to the animation progress. By default Hyperland uses this curve, and the animation proceeds the same way as the movement of the pink square. When opening a new window in Hyperland, it will first sharply increase in size, become larger than usual, and then slowly decrease to the normal size. The Bezier curve is defined by four values, which are just coordinates of the pink and blue circles regulating the slope angle of the curve. The default curve is just a straight line, meaning a regular linear function. In the input category, input devices are configured. Keyboard layout, mouse sensitivity, whether to enable numlock by default and so on. There are also subcategories for configuring the touchpad and tablet. The gestures category is for configuring gestures. Specifically, one gesture, switching between workspaces with three finger swipe. At the moment there are no others. The MISC category covers various things, default wallpapers, rendering features, window swallowing and much more. Now let's move on to configuring hotkeys. To create a hotkey we write bind followed by an equal sign, modifier, key, dispatcher and parameters. For example, this line creates a hotkey that when mod plus D is pressed will launch Wofi. The mod key, like in all other window managers, is written in a separate variable and is often either alt or super. The exact dispatcher executes the command, specified as a parameter. In this case, it's the command to launch Wofi. Unfortunately, there is no functionality in the default config to move windows, but this can be fixed by using the swap window dispatcher. Here we specify mod and shift as modifiers. Note that there is no comma between them. Then arrow keys for different directions and the swap window dispatcher itself, where we specify the direction of window movement as a parameter. When moving windows from one workspace to another, we also automatically switch to that workspace. However, this may not be convenient for everyone, so you can replace the Move to Workspace dispatcher with Move to Workspace Silent. This way you will stay on the same workspace. There is also the Resize Active dispatcher, which resizes the active window, taking the changes in size along the X and Y axis as parameters. Now let's move on to window rules. Hyperland provides quite extensive functionality for configuring them. To define rules, use the following syntax. Window rule, equal sign, rule, comma, window. You can specify almost anything as a rule. Whether the window should be floating, full screen, its size, transparency, 
whether to apply blur, animation style and much more. To specify which windows the rule should apply to, you can use several methods. When defining by class or window title, you need to use regex. You can obtain information about window classes and titles using the hyperstl clients command. You can also apply the rule depending on whether the window uses x valent, whether it's floating, full screen, and on which workspaces it's located, specifying the workspace ID or name. Thus, Hyperland provides practically limitless possibilities for creating window rules, where you can add exceptions for almost anything. There's also window rule v2, where the only difference from the first version is that you can specify multiple regex patterns for the same rule. Rules can also be added for workspaces. However, for some unclear reason to me, here you need to specify the workspace first and then the rule applied to it, rather than vice versa. There are no rules for monitors in Hyperland, but you can add them using the HyperCTL utility and sockets. HyperCTL is similar to BSPC from BSPWM. It can work with dispatchers, change configuration, cursor theme, and much more. This command also supports performing multiple operations at once using the batch option. The script provided in the official documentation will change the window gaps to 20 if the name of the current monitor is DP1, otherwise the gap size will be set to 30. Now let's move on to configuring the panel, which isn't included by default in Hyperland. The most popular panel used with Hyperland is Waybar. The functional part of the panel widgets is configured via JSON configuration file. The visual part of widgets is configured in the style.css file. So, if you are familiar with CSS, it will be very helpful in setting up Waybar. Honestly, I am not much of a designer myself, and I stole its style that CSS from GitHub. To ensure that Waybar starts with Hyperland, add exact once equals Waybar to the configuration file. Similarly, you can configure auto start for other programs, such as Wallpaper. For this purpose, I use SWWW. But let's get back to our panel. It can receive two signals. Sig user 1 toggles the visibility of Waybar, and Sig user 2 reloads its configuration. Using these two signals, I added the following hotcase. For launching applications, you can use Wofi. Through it, you can also implement a clipboard manager using a command like this one. However, you'll need to install WL Clipboard and Clipist for this to work. Hyperland has its own plugin system, although it's not the most convenient. Plugins are written in C++ and need to be compiled using GCC to obtain a .so file, which can then be loaded using the hyperstyle plugin load command, followed by the path to the .so file. Note that the path to the plugin must be absolute, not relative. Also, you can use the hyperpm command, which had been added recently, to load plugins and manage them. Now, let's talk about the practical use of Hyperland. Since Wayland is a completely different protocol from Xorg, many X-based applications may simply not work here. However, there is no the one Wayland protocol. Each compositor has its own implementation of this protocol. KD has its own, GNOME has its own, and so does Hyperland. Therefore, it's not wise to draw conclusions about Wayland based on the experience from one compositor. There is an anecdotal article on GitHub titled Wayland Breaks Everything, which basically describes the architectural downsides of Wayland and why it will never replace Xorg. In my opinion, the author is quite biased in this regard, and I find the response to this article more convincing. Wayland does indeed break everything related to X, but at this point almost everything works perfectly fine. However, I'll delve deeper into this topic in a separate video about Xorg and Wayland. Let's come back to Hyperland. This compositor is evolving rapidly, while on its earliest versions it was simply impossible to use due to numerous bugs. I would drag a window around and the entire screen would flicker. I would make a window, the screen would flicker. I would delete a window, the screen would flicker. Now the only bug I found is incorrect monitor scaling during automatic setup. Of course, there are still things to fix and programs to be ported to Wayland. But the problem here is not with Wayland itself. If I said that Linux breaks Photoshop, you'd call me crazy. The issue lies with Photoshop, which has not yet been ported to Linux. Wayland wasn't developed as a drop-in replacement for X, but intended to eventually replace it. 
Overall, I can say that I liked Hyperland, and I can recommend it to you. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like and have a great rest of your day.